Scatter plots are an excellent data visualization tool. They allow us to plot two variables against each other, and we can determine whether there is a relationship between those variables or not. Within Python, there are numerous plotting libraries that allow you to create scatter plots, including Matplotlib, Plotly, and Seaborn, each with their own features and syntax. Hey friends, I'm Andy, and if you already knew that, then welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to see how we can create a simple scatter plot using the Seaborn library. And the Seaborn library is built on top of matplotlib, so some of the syntax may be familiar, but it allows you to do things much, much easier. And the data that we're going to be looking at today is regular core analysis data. This data contains measurements that have been taken along a slab of core that has been acquired from a wellbore, and can include measurements such as porosity and permeability. With the permeability measurements, we often have a range of values going from 0.01 millidarcies all the way up to 10,000 and even beyond that. So this can be difficult to visualise on a linear scaled plot, however if we convert the y-axis to a logarithmic scale, we can then suddenly see much more variation within our data and can gain deeper insights about our measurements. If you're not familiar with this type of data then don't worry, as the techniques I'm going to show you can be applied to any data set where you want to have a semi-log scale scatter plot. Let's hop over to our Jupyter Notebook and generate some plots. So the first step within this notebook is to import the libraries. So we're going to import Seaborn as SNS and import Pandas as PD. If you're familiar with Python, you will know that these abbreviations just help speed up your typing of code and they are very common abbreviations used within Python programming. So let's run this cell and we import the libraries. If you haven't got them installed already, what you can do is you can create a new cell within Jupyter Notebook, put an exclamation mark followed by PIP for pip, and then install Seaborn. And then you run that cell, and it will be downloaded and installed into your site packages folder for this Python uh, kernel that you're running. Or if you're using Anaconda, it will be put into the appropriate place there. So next step is to read in the data. And we're just going to keep this very simple and we're going to be loading in CSV data. And this CSV data file contains core measurements. And these are individual measurements that have been taken along a slab of core. And these include porosity, permeability, grain density, and a few other measurements. So at the end, after putting in the file name, you'll see that I've got NA underscore values is equal to a single blank space. Now it is common within these particular CSV files that missing values are represented by just a blank cell. So what I've done here is passed in the argument any underscore values to convert those blank spaces to a NAN value or not a number. And this indicates missing data. So we can run that and then we can start checking on the data itself. And we can call upon df.describe and we will get back a table with all the statistics of the data. So let's create a very simple scatter plot with Seaborn. So I can type in sns.scatterplot, and then we specify the x axis, which is going to be equal to df, and we're going to call that Cpor for our core porosity, and then our y axis is going to be equal to df, and we're going to pass in ckhl. And when we run this, we get back a simple scatter plot. Just one little trick, if you are using Jupyter and you don't really want these little snippets here, or if you don't want to use plt.show, you can simply add a semicolon at the end. And when I rerun this, you'll see that that disappears. And it just makes for a cleaner output. So with this particular data, we have a lot of data along this zero point here. And then we have a small amount of points way up here to about 20,000 millidarcies. So what we need to do then, or what we need to consider, is switching this axis, the y-axis, over to a logarithmic scale. So that we can start to see some of the character within these lower permeability intervals, or these lower values. But still retaining information up in the higher intervals. And what we can do for that is we can set the y-axis to a logarithmic scale. And what we do is we simply take what we have up, up above and copy that into this cell. I'm going to assign this to a variable called p, just short for plot. And we can take this uh, semicolon off here and you only really need that on the last line that you're calling. So what we need to do to set the scales is call upon p.set and then in brackets we pass in y scale is equal to log and we pass log in as a string. 
So we can run that and what happens is we get back the plot. So now we can see much more character, more variation within these lower permeability intervals. And these are down about uh, 0 0.1 and 0 0.01 of, of a millidarcy. But we're still retaining that full spread on the porosity. So we can see these two points up here that we have around about 20,000 millidarcies are actually here. And then their next point is slightly just below that, which is probably this point here. So we can see when changing to a logarithmic axis, it stretches out the data and compresses some of it. And this just allows us to get a better understanding of the full variation of that data set. So we can start adding color to our plot very simply uh, by just copying and pasting the code that we've got above. And then we need to specify a few more arguments here. The first one is hue, and this is our color that we're going to apply. And for this, I will set this to core grain density. We can run this as it is, and we then get a plot back with this purple scaling. However, there's not much variation here uh, within this particular data set, but we can see that we range from 2.25 grams per cc to about 3 grams per cc. So perhaps we don't like this color. We can add in a color map from matplotlib. And if we go to the matplotlib documentation, we can see the wide range of colors that we have. We can see we've got viridis, plasma, inferno, magma, etc. And then we've got specific color ranges. So for this one, I'm going to use yellow, orange, brown. And if I go back here and we can specify Y-L-O-R-B-R. And then we can run that and we, and we get back the scatter plot with the right color scale. So now we can see some of our high density points down here, this one in particular, and this one. And we've also got our low core grain density points that are very light in color. So it can be a little bit hard to see that sometimes, so you may want to choose a different palette. So let's try Viridis. And we just type in Viridis. And there we have a slightly different color palette. And now we can see where our really dark points are. And then we've got our very high grain density points here. So another thing we can add to this is changing the size of the actual points. And this is simply done by providing an S argument for size. So if I put in size uh, 100 here and run that, we then get much bigger points on our plot. And it makes it a little bit easier to see what's happening. And you can see that each of the points in here have a border around them. So Choosing the right size is dependent upon what information you want to bring out. If you go too large, say if I went up to 500, we then have very large points here and it obscures the rest of the data. So sometimes there's a little bit of trial and error to make sure that this is at the right value for what you're trying to visualize. You can go further the other way, down to size 5, and we can see individual specs of data. However, it can then be hard to distinguish the color of each of these points. So they may be a bit small. You can see where the, the points actually lie. So let's start tidying up our plots. And the first thing that we're going to do is put on our actual labels for the X and the Y axis. So at the moment, Seaborn automatically picks up the names from the data frame, Seaport and CKHL, but we can specify full text names if we want to. So if I go to the endpoint here and move this semicolon down, we can then put in our labels. So if we do P, which is the, the object that we've created here, and we do set underscore X label, and we are going to set that to core porosity. And then in brackets, we're going to put a percentage sign, and that's a unit of measurement. And we can repeat that for our Y label, and we just change X to Y, and we change that to core permeability, and we set this to millidarcies. So when we run that, we now have our labels on our X and our Y axis. But we can just make it a little bit more readable by changing the font size, and we set that to 12, and also the font weight, which will allow us to set it to bold. And if I just copy this, down onto the next line, saves typing it all out again. We can then run that and we can see that we've now got more readable axis labels. So next we're going to change the size of this figure. At the moment it's just a little bit small. So if you want to display this on a presentation or in a report, you may need a slightly bigger figure. And one way that we can do that by typing in sns.set. 
So within the brackets, we're going to pass in an argument called RC, and then we're going to set that equal to curly brackets, and then we're passing in a text string of figure dot fig size. And then after that, we pass in a colon, and then followed by the actual size that we're wanting. So let's set this to 15 by eight. So when we run this, we get back a much larger figure. And we can see also that a theme has been applied to our figure. And we've got a gray background and then white lines, whereas up here, we didn't have any of that. And we can change that theme simply by going into adding a new line called sns.set underscore style. And let's put in white grid and then run that. And we can see that we've got a slightly different figure. We've got their gray lines and a white background. However, one thing to be aware of when you do set the theme is that any previous plots will have that theme apply to it when you rerun the cell. So if I go back up here and rerun this cell, we'll see that that theme has now been applied uh, to our previous plots. I hope you've enjoyed that short tutorial on how to create a semi-log scaled scatter plot. If you have, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content from this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. So thanks for watching and until next time, bye for now.